Alright, let's get started. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's stream. Hello, Ginger Nat. Welcome to the chat. Uh, that was an unintentional rhyme. Uh, my laptop's got sound coming out of it as well. No problem, Ginger Nat. Uh, I need to actually go back through all my old videos and update the uh, description to say that the website has now changed. It wasn't originally the plan to have a new website. Uh, URL. It was meant to continue with Majeffries.com, but since the channel name changed, it kind of made sense to, uh, to change the URL as well. Um, so I have two websites now instead of one, which I think is, you know, not many channels my size have one website, let alone two. So it's me just standing out from the crowd as usual. Anyway, we are playing some train simulator tonight. Let's get the sound. The game did crash just now when I was sat waiting to uh, to start the stream. So hopefully it doesn't do that tonight. Uh, let me just choose the right thing. Hopefully it doesn't do that during the stream. That's what I meant to say. Um, I actually completely forgotten. That's not what I was doing. What was I? I went drive. Career maybe. I had it just now. I had what I wanted and everything. Ah, I think it was under this. Okay. Yeah, it was under this. Okay, right. So we're going to start with this one. Right down the line, it's on the uh, Midland Main Line, London St Pancras to Bedford, driving a Class Three One Nine EMU First Capital Connect service. Evening Josh, welcome to the stream. Uh, there should be a couple of other people joining us as the stream goes on as well. Things should get quite... In fact, yep, they're already in the chat. Hello guys, welcome to the stream. <laughs> Hello Kurt. Right, let's get started. Drive some trains. So, we might as well start, as we mean to go on, with a full length service between Bedford and St Pancras International, driving a 319, which is actually one of my favourite modern day... Uh, EMUs, to be honest. There's something, like, they're not the nicest looking trains, the 319s, but there's something about them. They have a little quirkiness to them, um, which other trains don't really have. <laughs> Prepared to train, indeed. I hope. It says it's not responding at the moment, which is not great. Train simulator is very sporadic, like this, when it comes to actually loading up. Sometimes it wants to, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you know, sometimes it just decides to sit on a not responding screen for ages. But yeah, the 319s, quite nice looking trains in certain, some respects. Not very nice looking trains in other respects. Uh, with your 4K hours, are you free to give criticism or helpful tips? As to what? My driving style? the trains that I'm using, the route that I'm on. Oh, the game's loaded again. That's nice. How much student loan went on the expansions? Uh, more than I'd care to admit. It's a Steam sale at the moment, though, which is kind of the reason why. Actually, I'll be honest with you guys. I was meant to be playing a, a scenario that Josh created, uh, not for the stream, but just in general. But uh, unfortunately, he didn't get it finished just in just missed out on getting it done in time so that we could actually see it on the stream. It is on the Midland Main Line though, so I thought I'd play the Midland Main Line anyway, uh, and then next week perhaps, if I'm not doing Somerset Hills Railway, uh, we can actually play the scenario on stream then. This is a really long load time. I'm hoping that's it loaded. Driving style. Uh, I mean... Okay, yeah, okay, you can criticise my train driving style. I'm aware of some of the... Um, sort of do's and don'ts when it comes to train driving. Ooh, lovely camera. 
You are currently at Bedford. This service will be running the whole length of the line between Bedford and St Pancras in uh, Thameslink. That should be international. Your duties will finish at St Pancras Thameslink, although this service will then continue to Beckingham Junction. Open the doors and allow passengers to board at Bedford before departing. That's cool. I just press T. Right. Uh, I pressed Q. Is that not what the button is? Keyboard layout. Yeah, AWS reset. I pressed Q. It didn't do anything. That's worrying. There are a couple of small bugs on this route in terms of unmapped speed limits on the... Hu oh, great. You tell me that now. Okay. We're probably going to have a few issues then. I should point out, you guys are seeing a lovely full screen set up, although, saying that, the cursor does disappear if I take it to a certain point. I'm actually playing the game in windowed mode tonight so that you can see it in this lovely, uh, whatever you would call this. So, um, you'll have to excuse me if I do miss some things. Right, we are going to have to depart now. Oh, cry. Let's start as we mean to go on, shall we, with a massive pull away that's probably going to give everyone in the back whiplash. The notches are very sensitive. Oh, God, I'm going to This is the difference now. Because I built my own routes in the past, I know where all the whistle boards and speed limit changes and everything like that are. Uh, whereas on this... I've never driven this route before. Your guess is as good as mine. So I'm probably going to miss all the whistle boards. So Josh, forgive me for that. Uh, I'm probably going to miss... I mean, I can see some of the speed limit boards. They come up on the HUD at the bottom. Which, by the way... Okay, the tip jar is not in a bad position, actually. Uh, the signal was green. Yeah, it was. Oh, boy. <laughs> I've got to remember which button does the brake. It's that. Cool. Right. Uh, I'm also going to struggle to read chat whilst I'm actually driving. Oh, I can speed up. That, is that one of those um, moments you were talking about there? Alright, let's go hell to leather. I am driving an express service, so we can go quite fast along these sections here. Next stop is in 16 miles. There is one of 100 mile per hour going into the tunnel after Elstree and Borenwood Station. HUD says 110 until you enter the tunnel. And then, yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. It's one of my, my um, grievances with Dovetail, I suppose, is the fact that I didn't see that. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Uh, yeah, that's one of my grievances with Dovetail in that the routes aren't necessarily checked fully before they're released and the fact is we're paying money for this and there are bugs in terms of speed limits mm. I would want my money back personally I mean that one just now that was me that was definitely me not paying attention I saw 75 got excited didn't look for the 50 I'm not even touching the keyboard at the moment that's how uh much of a renegade I am. I could actually drive with the Xbox controller. I'd probably find that easier in some respects. Alright, so it's 100 miles per hour just south of Elstree and Borenwood. Remember that and we'll all be happy. Give a little toot. I know you're not supposed to do that. I know there are whistle codes and horn codes and things like that as well. Um... Again, if people want to tell me what they are, feel free. I'm not going to go look them up, and I'm not going to be chastised for not doing them properly because I'm not an actual train driver. If we remember those little facts, we will all get along fine tonight. Good audio tonight. Awesome. Thank you, golfer. Doing the old diagnostics for me. Much appreciated. And picture. Good. Awesome. I did do a, a total desktop restart before this to make sure everything was working properly so I'm, uh, I'm glad to see that it has in fact done the job 
Alright, 14 miles till our next stop. We are still accelerating. These trains are not the fastest ac accelerating, are they? Southeastern drivers are only allowed to use the first tone. I, yeah, I heard about that. Something to do with disturbing residents, is it not? The two tone was uh, abolished. I heard that from PTG Rail. I think that is a bit ridiculous. I mean, the, the two tones were brought in for a reason. Health and safety. If someone gets hit by a train now, I bet that's the first thing that will get mentioned. Alright, I am supposed to be arriving at 7.24.55. Uh, my estimated time of arrival is 7.24.43, so we are currently running ahead of schedule. I might do my old F1 style and do a little bit of late braking as well to try and make up some time. Although you can get penalised, not maybe not in this game, I think it might be trends in world, you can actually get penalised for running early. I know in Japan you get penalised for running early. Fellow train passing the other direction, I just got an achievement, London to Bedford 319 driver, it says. Again, I've not no idea really what that's all about. Alright, I am going to stop accelerating very shortly. I can see the 100 mile an hour speed limit coming up. Drop it into P2 for a second. And now I'll allow the train to coast. <laughs> Steal that line from PTG. Deary me. Shameless. Alright. Okay, the train is slowing down, so I'll just put it back in P3 again. I've probably missed about four or five whistle boards. I just don't think I have the patience or the know-how to be able to do a route learning type thing. I mean, I'll pick up some key things as we go through this, but overall I don't think I'd be able to learn this route unless I was actually going to be driving it as a job. I'm just glad all the lights are green as well at the moment because my uh, my response time for the AWS is probably not going to be great either particularly as I did press Q earlier and it didn't work so if I'm having to then scrabble over to try and click it we could end up with a, an emergency brake application is what I'm trying to say Oh, Josh, where do you stand on uh, sounding the horn when entering tunnels? Personally, it's an instinctive thing, but um, I know that if it's not regulation, then, you know, it's not regulation. Flitic coming up. Not Flitwick. Flitic. Yeah, but you've driven it. As you said, you've got 4,000 hours and you told me that's your favourite route. So you've probably driven that hundreds and hundreds of times. In a car, I can drive from here to Ely five different ways without consulting a map or a sat-nav. I haven't done it for four years, but I still know how to. Mainly because I drove it like every other weekend for two years. Right, I will sound the horn as I'm going through the platforms here at Flitic. because I think that's common courtesy. So, here we go. Oh, there is two torn two, two tones, two tones. There is two tones on this horn. Nicely done. It's very rare for default locos and uh, EMUs to have two tone horns in my experience anyway. But then I drive Steam a lot, so Steam doesn't have two tone. They have two whistle valves. Some locos have two whistle valves, but that's not really the same. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, sort of five, ten years ago, people would say, oh, you can't treat a video game as a simulator. But these days, I've actually seen videos like the Crossrail simulator that they actually train drivers on. 
I would say the resolution on that is inferior to the resolution you get in Train Simulator. So, yeah, use it as a tool. That's what it's there for. Things might be different in the real world. You know, a tree might grow in front of a sign, or a signal might have been relocated during a uh, um, a possession. But yeah, there's no reason why that can't be possible. Is the train sound okay, or is it too loud, too quiet? Let me know, and I'll uh, adjust it accordingly. Yeah, I've actually... Uh, there's a guy who I fo used to follow on uh, YouTube and Twitch and stuff who, who is now training to become a, a pilot, general aviation pilot, because they played f Flight Simulator. It's really... What a weird world we live in. Like, people drive trucks for fun. Uh, people start bus companies on games for fun. People then go out and learn how to fly a real plane because they flew one in a computer game. What a wonderful, weird world we live in. Sound is good. Awesome. Right, we are four miles away from Leegrave. Which is not actually a town I'm that familiar with, despite the fact that I live very, very close to the Midland Main Line. So, uh, yeah. And in fact, we're going, we're going to be going through St. Albans soon, which is where I'll be for my graduation ceremony in uh, two months' time. Almost to the day. Two months and six days away I'll be graduating. And in fact... I do have good news today. I got my dissertation result back this morning and I got a first on it. So, providing everything else goes okay, a first class honours is still very much possible. So I'm very, very happy with that. 75 I got on the dissertation. I do have Euro Truck. Uh, I haven't played it for, again, must be about four years. Sorry, yes, Kurt, we, we will be graduating. The, uh, the four musketeers, five musketeers, will all be graduating in September. Hopefully all with first class honours as well. You never know. Right, we are two miles away, so I am going to start braking gently, because I think I might have actually overdone this. <laughs> Out of a hundred, Josh. It's always out of 100. A 40 is a pass. Um, a 50 is a... Well, sorry. A 40 is a pass and a third. A 50 is a 2-2. Two -two, a 60 is a 2-1. And a 70 is a first. Did I say third? I, s I meant to say third for 40. It's a pass and a third. Get my words mixed up. So, yeah. I've got 75. Uh, all grades are 2s, 5s, or 8s nothing else. So you either get like a 42, a 45, or a 48, or a 52, 55, 58. So I got 75 out of 100, which is very much in the middle bracket of a first. You start braking at 90, about 0.8 miles from a station. Yeah, I might have braked a bit early here, actually. Because I'm, I'm not familiar with the train. Uh, I do remember some advice that someone gave me when I was used to drive the javelins in a previous stream, which was to start braking a mile and a half out when you're travelling at full speed. So I'm probably going to be a little bit late now. I'm the worst train driver there is. Uh, and don't even get me started on stop boards. <laughs> I will look for the 8 car stop board, but if I miss it, I miss it. Simple as that. Uh, there is a Midland, East Midlands Trains HST or 222 that's stuck behind me at the moment because I am going far too slow on the fast line here. Now I think I've underbraked. No, oh, maybe not. Alright, I'm going to be a minute late minute or so late. It's not too bad. There's the four. There's the eight. That is actually pretty good going in terms of stopping places. Where's the board? 
I tell you what, I've missed it slightly, by like half a meter, I would say I've missed that. I am very happy with that as a first stop. Very happy with that. Fanning the brakes, yes. Feathering the brakes. No, you feather the throttle, you fan the brakes. That's right. Alright. Brakes off. When you're ready, train. Here we go. I keep going to toot the horn. You don't do that in the regular service. Right. Luton. Two and a half miles away. Uh, and I'm currently scheduled to get there 30 seconds early. So let's make up for some lost time now, shall we? Acceleratron. So the plan for tonight's stream is to stream for approximately two hours. Uh, if I'm in the middle of a scenario when the two hour time limit hits, then obviously I will continue until the scenario is finished. If I am finishing a scenario and there's like ten minutes till the end of the stream, then I will probably end the stream early. Uh, just so that we're not, you know, get going on all night. Because I'm streaming four times a week from today onwards. So I want to keep my voice, plus all the videos that I'm going to be making for next week and the week after and the week after and the week after and so on and so forth. Uh, plus it's not just my channel I'll be working for from now on as well. So um, I do need to keep my voice intact for as long as possible. Come on, train. You toot your horn when starting to leave from a depot for reasons I hope are obvious. Yes. And you only do it once the train is moving, because if you alert people to your presence and then there's a problem with the train, uh, you know, it's not good form. Whereas with steam, you sound the whistle before you accelerate to inform people nearby that the train itself is about to move. The sound of the engine itself is pretty self-explanatory. That will warn people once the train has actually begun moving. It's very difficult to uh, ignore the sound of a steam locomotive accelerating. That's what I love about them. That raw power. There's nothing else like it. Don't give me all that diesel engine nonsense. It's not the same. Right. 100 mile an hour speed limit here. Oh crap. We actually are coming up on Luton. And I'm probably going to miss the uh, stop now. <laughs> Guess he wasn't paying attention again. Two and a half miles, don't I? Fly by. Oh, I might have salvaged it. Yeah, I think I've salvaged it. Bit bumpy. I actually, I mean, I like underrated trains, and sprinters are definitely on that list. I don't like paces. I'm glad they're going. But sprinters, I have a soft spot for. Because they are proper workhorses. I don't like the single cars, which are the 153s, aren't they? I like the 155s and the 158s. If you'd have said you like paces, then we would have had to have evaluated our friendship, but... Alright, stop any time you like, train. Again, I over-braked and then under-braked a little bit, but stopping distance, not bad. Not bad. So, is anyone watching this on m4jmedia.com, or is everyone watching it directly from Twitch? people frantically switching over to the other one now just to say that they're on there. I don't mind. Either's good. You see the same thing, so... Alright. Next stop. Everyone's on Twitch. I figured as much. That's fine. Entirely optional. Oh, we're not stopping at Luton Airport Parkway. 
I thought all Thameslink services stopped there. Interesting. 90 miles an hour as we accelerate away here. I do like the sound on this game of trains passing over point work. That little did it did it noise as the axles go over. Your favourite DMU is 100% the 150s. Both variations. I am very, very tempted on having a 150 operate on the Somerset Hills Railway and have that as sort of the, the modern limit, as it were. They're technically mo not modern, but you know what I mean. Like the most recent variation. Right, I will toot 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 the horn again as we go through Luton Airport. Here we go. Up to 95 miles an hour. We'll shortly be going up to 100 miles an hour. Fair enough, fiction's fine. As you know, I like fiction. I like creating my own things from scratch. All green lights still. Good stuff. We might start hitting some yellows and reds as we get closer to London. I haven't actually done a scenery test to see what happens as we get closer to London. Whether the game will crash or not. I'm hoping it doesn't. My PC should be able to cope with um, large amounts of memory usage. We shall see. Right, just over three miles to Harpenden. I'll start braking just before the mile mark. So I will start coasting at the two mile mark and then I'll start braking at the one mile mark. That should mean we slow down accordingly. So here we go, two mile mark. And the train, due to natural friction, will start decelerating quite nicely. And then as we get to the one mile, I will start braking. Although I'm getting nervous. Trust your instincts. That's what you got to do when you're a train driver. you just got to trust your gut. Maybe 1.1 miles. Oh, it's gaining fast. Alright, 1.1 miles. I'll do a step 2 application to start with. If I need to go full service, I will. I wish, as well as just telling me, like, how... F just instead of the speed going down like that, I wish it would tell me how much brake force I'm actually uh, exerting. So then I'll know if I'm braking too much or too little. I feel like I've over braked again. Yet when you're going 100 miles an hour with 2 miles to go, you feel like that's when you should be braking. It's a horrible feeling. That feeling of I'm not going to stop in time. And this is me doing it in a game. Imagine if I did it in real life. Christ. Right, we will fan the brakes. Entering Harpenden. I've always found Harpenden a strange town. It's quite upmarket in certain places, but it's literally right next to Luton, which is not very upmarket 
in all the places. There we go. Eight car board again. Yeah, I don't have time to look at that. I've got to look down for that. And even then, it's measured in bar. And yes, I have used bar in the past, but when I'm panicking as well as hosting a live stream and trying to not crash, converting bar to uh, a, a unit of measurement that I can use, it's like acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. So brake force should also be, like your, your not brake force, but your actual braking should also be measured in meters per second squared. And then from that, I can deduce whether I'm braking too much or too little. Full beans. Am I running early? I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm back on schedule. Nice. I know I'm racking up the points. Apart from that little speeding thing that I had at the start, which wasn't very good. That was totally my fault. Could have very easily derailed the train at that point as well. Is the stream jumping a little bit? It's a bit choppy on my laptop. Let me know if it's choppy for you guys as well. So same thing here. I'll start coasting approximately two miles out, although I don't think we'll get up to 100 miles an hour this time. So uh, maybe a little bit closer. About one minute late because you got a penalty deduction of points at Harpenden. Did I? Did I? Even though my ETA is is about right still. Oh, oh right. Yeah, because I didn't get the max points. Gotcha. So somewhere coming up is a bridge that I drive over quite a lot when I'm out and about. It could well be this one. Oh, I think it's a bit closer, actually. It's in St. Albans. Okay, coming up on two miles out. We are going downhill as well, so I've got to factor that in. Alright, Q did work. I'm going to start braking now because of the uh, AWS warning. Always be ready to stop. Release the brakes again, should be able to slow down enough from 60, 70. Here comes the next magnet. Oh, lightning fast. That's a single yellow. Which means the next signal will be a red. for a little bit. This is going to make me late. Actually, it's not going to make me late because I'm currently 25 seconds early. Maybe that's the problem then. Maybe I'm too early and there's a train in front. Particularly on the Thameslink route, if you start running early, it's just as bad as if you're running late. Alright, be prepared to stop. The signal is indeed red. Beep. 
I'll quick on the draw again. Please stop. Please stop. <sighs> I genuinely thought for a second there I wasn't going to stop in time. What a horrible feeling. Okay, so there is a train in front. Where am I? Alright, so that is the train in front and it's just starting to depart so any second now we should get the go ahead to move forward into platform 3 at St Albans City bit jerky but I'm running late so ain't got time for messing about Although I, I shouldn't really be rushing at this point because I am now chasing the train in front. Uh, that bridge there, by the way, I think is the one that I drive over. Alright, start applying the brake again. Temporary release. Start applying the brake again. There's a cat fighting outside my window. Yep, there's two cats fighting outside my window. Wonder if, did anyone else hear that cat fight, or was it just me? <laughs> My bloody cats, they love fighting with each other and the neighbours' cats and all kinds of rubbish. Alright, as I say, no point in rushing at this point, because... Uh, <laughs> no point in rushing at this point, because we're just going to have to wait for the train in front to clear the signals anyway, which it has now done. I've not quite stopped in the right place this time, but, you know... It's not as bad. Alright, signal's now green. Good. So we get a good, clean getaway. Somewhere there should be... Uh, actually, it'll be the next signal now. The AWS. <clears throat> which could well not be green. So we might still have to do some alarms. Yes, I did get a timeliness penalty. That's harsh. It wasn't even my fault I was late. Now, it's technically like I was a minute late because I was held up at a red and because I over brake and under brake. I mean, that last bit is my fault, but the bit before that isn't. Right, so we will be having to swap lines soon. Um, that happens think just after Elstree and Bournemouth, Bournemouth and Elstree, whichever way around it is. Um, and then we are an express from here to St Pancras. You've got a thousand points. Actually, for, for a first time run, not knowing the route, 734 points at the moment, I'm quite happy with. Yeah, it's not it's not a competition, it's just good old harmless fun. I'm happy if I get eight hundred points I will more than take that. I'll be very, very happy with that. And there's the AWS clearing. So yeah, is the stream choppy for anyone else? Is it stuttering or is it smooth? Let me know now and I'll change it or forever hold your peace. Ok, 
Okay, going up to 110 miles an hour. It's stuttering a little at times. Okay, so the uh, the KBS is running at a smooth 6,000 at the moment. It does from time to time drop to 1,000. But if it's only doing it sporadically, then I won't make any massive changes to the settings. Because there's, there's no point in changing everything if it's only occasionally going wrong. Okay, not seen many trains since the last, oh, in the last sort of 15 minutes or so. Not really gone past many, unless I've not been looking at the screen when it's happened. There is the one that we're running behind at the moment. But besides that, yeah, not many. We are going to be running into the underground platforms at St Pancras as well, which is, uh, well, you won't get to see much. <laughs> you won't get to see much out the window in the tunnels. Well, if you've got your scenario finished on time, Josh, we'll be playing it right now. Okay, going through Radlett any second now. Radlett, L Street, and then there's the unmarked 100 limit. So you said it's as you go into the tunnel. So I might play it safe and just stick it 100 at the moment. We're scheduled to arrive 20 seconds earlier than expected. There we go, rocket through Radlett. Slowing down a little bit. Going uphill, that's why. There we go. Gain some speed again. Do you know where the switchover is between the fast and slow lines, Josh? As in when the train actually switches over. There's Elstree and Bournemouth. There's a train. Hello, train. Nice eight carriage train there. Look at that, holding it at a hundred almost perfectly as we climb up towards Elstree. Alright, as we begin to crest the hill, I'm going to start coasting. The uh, KBS has now dropped. Just before Kentish Town. Okay. You probably can't hear what I'm saying at the moment because it will be stuttering. Go through Elstree. So the 100 mile an hour is round about here. There's the board. This is 110. Oh yeah, there it is. 100 mile an hour. So it looks like it's 100 through all the tunnels. That's what I can deduce from this. And isn't it annoying? Again, dovetail. If you're going to put tunnels in your routes like this, put the bloody decals in as well so you get the nice sound effect. And not just a little distant rumbling as if you're going under a bridge, but a proper tunnel effect. So if I was to go through that with a steam locomotive and I ring the whistle, you'd be able to hear it from 12 miles away. Otherwise, what's the bloody point? Mill Hill Broadway. Which I didn't even know was a station till just now. I'm going to style it out and pretend I knew about it all along. 
I'm guessing that's near Mill Hill East on the northern line. It's one of those magical things of mine where I look at a map, an actual map, and realise just how close some of these main lines are to one another as you get into London. Alright, we are starting to go downhill, so I'm going to let it coast in P1 as we roar through Mill Hill Broadway. In the next scenario, if I'm feeling cocky, I might do some station flybys. So I go and stand on the platform as the train's approaching. Here we go. Through Mill Hill Broadway. Now starting to slow down again, so I'll stick it back into maximum overdrive. AWS is playing ball as well. Nice to see. Hendon is the next station coming up. So we are approximately 10 minutes away from St Pancras. We'll have to start prepping for slowdown soon because particularly crossing lines and then uh, starting to descend into the tunnels around Kentish Town. I'm going to have to be ready for that. This is a weird bit, isn't it, where the two lines separate for a little bit. I've not been on the middle and main line much. Once Thames Link's fully up and running, I plan on just going down and riding it to say that I've done it. Whether it'll be any fun or not, I've no idea. But hey-ho. I really want to ride on Crossrail when it first opens as well. And the the, uh, the IETs, I'd like to experience them on the uh, the east coast when they first start running. All right, so there is a 95 mile an hour speed restriction coming up, so I will start braking for that now. Oh, I've gone way below it. Freight depot on the left. God damn it. <laughs> Just as I thought things were starting to get plain sailing. Damn AWS kicks in. Signal looks green though. Yeah. So I think we're chasing yellows into St Pancras now. Four tracks goes into six here for freight purposes. Figured as much. Alright, we more than easily hit the uh, the 95. In fact, we're almost ready to hit the 85. AWS has cleared again, so perhaps... Oh, I didn't sound the horn going through there. Whoops! Everyone at Cricklewood has died. Ah, of course it is. Of course it is. Yeah, AWS for speed drops. See, that's why I need someone. Just a little friendly face in the cockpit reminding me. You know, come on, Mark, you're being an idiot here. Maybe not quite as literally as that, but yeah. So this should be another... Maybe not. Even though there's... Maybe because I'm already doing the speed. It, it doesn't need to tell me. I'm way below the speed limit. There is an 81 coming up, though, as we go through West Hampstead. Yeah, look who rem remembered to do the horn. And then couldn't get out the word remembered. Oy. Right. 80 restriction coming up. I'm actually going to try and hit the uh, the speed limit again. go. Starting to go downhill now as well, so get ready to put the brake on if necessary. 75 limit coming up. And then 50 and then 25. So that must be where the crossover is. Yeah, just before Kentish Town. Cool. So 
we're going to poodle along at 75 in just a second. I will start braking for the uh, the 50 reduction very shortly. And I've got my finger hovered over the AWS as well, just in case. We are now doing 75. I will start applying the brake now for the 50. Should get an AWS, maybe not here, but at the next magnet. There we go. We should be hitting the 50 limit, no problem. Is this where we're crossing over? Yes, it is. All right, and I shall start braking. ready for the 25. So I'm guessing the U stands for underground? No, up. Up. Of course it does. Up. And then D is down. The DOI. That should be me sw switching over to the up line. There it is. There we go. Nicely done, Mark, if I do say so myself. And then we'll be hitting 30 again momentarily. Don't need to sound the horn here. We're going slow enough. Alright, we can now go 30. Whoops. I think I accelerated a little bit too sporadic there. There's another train. Say hi to him. I know him. We're, we're best mates. We're always on shift together. Okay, 1.4 miles out from St Pancras. This will be the first time I actually get to see what the hell goes on in these tunnels. For me, it's witchcraft. The last time I took a train on this line, it was between St Pancras and St Albans. And we were just in black the whole way through. We emerged from the tunnel. I recognised Kentish Town because I went through there once when I was very, very young. And it hasn't changed at all in the 20 or so years since. Um, and then the next thing I knew, we were on the fast lines. And then we were at St Albans. So, and I've not been able to find any maps, like track plan maps, that let me see exactly what goes on here. We will start descending shortly. This is almost like the approaches to King's Cross. Not quite the same. Be very careful of the downgrading. Yes. Roger that. I'm going to do what I do when I'm approaching Lambton. And slow down in advance. Let the train start to speed up as we go down the hill. So I can get a, a measure of just how much it's going to speed up and then apply the brake accordingly. That's probably not the way to do it, but it's the way I'm going to do it. There we go. So we are starting to gather speed. I got an achievement for uphill gradient, which is odd considering we're on a downhill gradient. All right, brake on. Just a tick. There we go. I'm going to tickle the brakes on there. Is that a line? Yeah. I think that's the North London line we've just gone under. Oh, I caught that just in time. Oi, oi, oi. Right. I think it's more reminiscent of the approach to Liverpool Lime Street. Yeah. Yeah. Could well be. I mean, the uh, the tunnels at King's Cross are very much like this as well. I think all approaches to mainline terminus stations are like this. Even like Euston has this kind of thing going on. So as it turns out, this tunnel is not very exciting at all. Yeah, just runs under the platforms. I don't know, I thought there'd be like a, a portal somewhere to Sodor or something like that. Alright, I think we're coming off the tail end of the uh, gradient now, so I will start speeding up again so that we're not completely overdoing it. 
and then we'll round the corner. The canal tunnels exit either side of us here, which you can now use to catch a train from places like Peterborough and Cambridge. And this is St Pancras Thameslink. Right, I don't actually know where the 8 car is here. I think that's it on the left there. Maybe not. So I'm just going to stop roughly towards the end of the platform. Or basically I'm just going to leave it on step 1 and it stops where it stops. Within the next 5 seconds would be nice. Boom. We arrived a full 12 seconds early. I will take that, thank you very much. That should get me another 150 points maybe. 884, that'd be pretty good. I'll be happy with that. It's a long time that you stop at St Pancras for. I'm not quite sure how they're going to run trains every 90 seconds if this is the waiting time. 167. Right, let's see how I did. So yeah, speeding. Lots of speeding. A few timeliness. Some penalties there. Not bad. I'm happy with that. I think I got gold. I scored 901. Not bad for a first run. Never done the route before. And we're going to do something very similar to that right now. Because we're going to run another route that I've never been on before. Uh, which is the East Coast Main Line. Set it up properly, Mark. Christ's sake. Uh, the East Coast Main Line. London to Peterborough. I've just gone past. Where is it? There it is. And we are going to do the morning commute from King's Cross to Stevenage using one of the new trains, the Class 801. And I'm probably going to fail at this epically because I don't actually know how to set it, set it up. I'm going to assume that the basic layout is going to be similar to the Javelins, 395s. Um, and there might be something you actually you wouldn't have to do that with this because this is electric only. I was going to say you'd have to change between like pantograph up and shoe down, and or between um, pantograph and diesel. But no, this is an electric only. The 800s and the 802s are bi mode. The 801s are pure overhead electric. So it should be set up ready for us to go. We are going to go through a 20 minute load screen again though, and yep. It says not responding once more. I think that's just a, a default thing it says whilst it's loading. So, Josh, rate my driving. You already have a scenario for the East Coast Main Line from Peterborough to King's Cross. Okay, well I'll have to do that next time then. But yeah, rate my driving. Good, bad, indifferent. I'll let you give your opinion and then I'll offer mine. Because mine counts a lot less, really. Because I'm biased. I would actually prefer to do this scenario driving one of the networkers because again I think actually I said at the start of the stream that the 319s are one of my favorite modern trains um, and again I'm using the word modern in inverted commas for this because they're like 25 30 years old now but the 365s the 465s and 6s and the 165s and 6s are my favourite modern trains. 
there's something about a networker that just looks nice they look very sleek very modern I'm very disappointed that they uh, have mostly been withdrawn from services now on Great Northern the 365 there are some that have been kept I'm very happy that the uh, the ones that were put in storage have actually been reused up in Scotland even though it's only a temporary measure good for a first time on the route with practice you could become much better when when I get a better PC I could show you how I do it well I'm not looking for show-offs necessarily I'm doing this for fun not for a, a job opportunity funny enough train driver was never one of the things I wanted to do when I was a kid I wanted to work with railways but I never wanted to work on trains Ah, so I'm going to be driving this into King's Cross and then out again, by the looks of things. Love the camera angles. Where's my train? This is it. Alright, good morning driver. Following a delay whilst preparing the train, you are now running slightly late. Oh, that's fine. I would have made us run late anyway. You will need to proceed to King's Cross, uh, s quickly as possible due to your departure time of 5.50. That is inexcusable. A spelling mistake. Seriously. What the hell? Right. Um, put you in forward. Oops. Wrong button. Cancel the AWS. It's a single handle by the looks of things, which is nice. Uh, that sounded like a diesel engine for a second. XVI trains coming soon. I tell you what, if you go on my website and you go on, oops, if you go on my website and you go on the YouTube page and you look at the animation for the transport tab, that is a um, 159 class 159 in Network Southeast livery that I took into Photoshop and repainted it in. Uh, my blue and my red. I actually want someone to see if they can make that livery for me for either Train Simulator or for OpenTTD. Because if they made it for OpenTTD on various different types of train, I would so use it. That would be so freaking cool. And then, yeah, make an XVI livery as well. <laughs> because why not? Right, I can feel the FPS dropping in this scenario. I think there's a lot of scenery around here. So this is Alexandra Palace on the right-hand side. We've just left Bounds Green Depot, which is currently the home of LNER trains. That's a whole topic that I'll talk about in a different um, series. I'm not going to discuss that here because I'll just turn it into a rant if I start talking about it right now. It'd be really nice to have like my identity in the game, particularly on the uh, the British new GRF that's currently available. That'd be so cool, just to load up the game and, and start a service running using my livery trains. All right, thirty-five mile an hour coming up. Bounds Green and Hornsey depots are very resource resource intensive, particularly with many trains stabled. Yeah, it, it's like that in real life as well, Josh. When I go past, particularly uh, Hornsey, when I go past Hornsey depot, I can feel the FPS slipping. <laughs> That's such a bad joke. <laughs> it's such a bad joke. I do apologise, everyone, for that awful joke. Okay, I take it the speed limit goes up again shortly. Otherwise we're just going to be running at 25 miles an hour for ages. Yeah, 60. Thought as much. There are quite a few trains stabled off to the left there. I'm looking forward to getting into a section of track where I can really see what this train does. Right now I'm very tentative. Like I don't want to break any speed limits, even though I have already broken a speed limit. 
gloss over that. That red signal's not for me, is it? I hope not. No, it's not. Good. Sound the horn as we go through. Uh, this is Hornsey Station, isn't it? If I can read a sign. Yep, that's Hornsey. The next one's Haringey. That will shoot by. And then Finsbury Park. And then King's Cross. Why is there an East Coast liveried HST? Come on, Dovetail! That's so old. That's like five, six years ago now. You can't have the 801s and the HSTs in cross country, not cross country, in uh, East Coast livery. That's such an anachronism. Might as well put an intercity train over there. Crying out loud. Right, Haringey. That guy is not standing behind the yellow line. Rules are made for a reason. Not to be broken. That's not the reason. Alright, get it up as close to the limit as possible coast for a little bit and then start decelerating for the 40. It's interesting that we're, we're actually taking priority over that, the, uh, the fast line by the looks of things. This is Finsbury Park. So any football fans look out on the left hand side in just a second. Alright, I'm going to start slowing down now for the 40. So the tracks branch off to the left here, down towards Drayton Park, and then onto the uh, city, northern city line, which takes you to Moorgate. And I believe, I think it's the inner of the two tracks there on the left, so the one closest to us that takes you to Drayton Park. The one on the far left actually is a freight-only line that links up with the North London line, uh, at Highbury and Islington, I think is where the junction is. Right, so we're crossing over onto the fast line in just a second, which we have to do, otherwise we cross over on the bridge and end up going into the suburban platforms, which I don't think this train will actually fit in. Football fans, if you look out the left-hand window, you will see the Emirates Stadium. How dumb is this as well? I know Drayton Park's quite an old station, but they close it on match days. It's the nearest station to the stadium. They could quite easily upgrade it to be able to carry the, uh, or be able to contain the amount of football fans that would be going to and from the Emirates. But they would much rather ruin everyone's day by having them all get off at Finsbury Park, which means business people, particularly on Thursdays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, whenever Arsenal decide to play their European matches, um, people trying to get home from work or trying to get home from just going to see London for the day have to navigate their way through hooligans right I'm gonna coast here put a little bit of braking on stick to the 60 there's the bridge that crosses over this is the route of all the main lines in the UK the east coast is my turf this is... I've made this journey so many times. So many times. Alright, I'm going to start slowing down for the 35. Between this tunnel and the next tunnel, you'll look up and you'll see the uh, High Speed 1 Tunnel Bridge. It's a very weird structure. Crossing over the top of us. You will also see the North London Line on a big viaduct cross over the top of us. And then if you look over to the right as we come out, sort of on a 45 degree angle, you might catch a glimpse of High Speed 1 as it starts bending round towards um, St Pancras. So there's the North London line on the bridge. That blue structure in front of us is High Speed 1. And if you just look up to the right there now, you'll be able to see where it curves off. 
times the AWS. Going through Gasworks Tunnel Line B, we're signalled into Platform 6. Why am I accelerating? Right, once arrived at King's Cross, release the doors. Sure thing. Okay, slow down a bit too much there. Uh, sped up too much there. As it turns out, I'm rubbish at managing the speed of a Class 801. So my plan is to enter the platform at 15 miles an hour and then begin to slow down from there. This feels too slow. Particularly on OpenTTD, I upped all the speed limits from 15 to 25 because I thought that was more realistic and now I've just found out that they are in fact 15. <sighs> so I've got to go, <laughs> go and redo that speed sheet. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh, and I'm speeding. Of course I am. Alright, platform zero is where that 801 is sticking out from there. Uh, used to be a taxi rank and is now a platform. And I think it was originally called platform Y. And they didn't want to renumber every single platform in the station because they felt it would cause confusion. So they decided it was easier for everyone if they just called it platform zero. Which, I mean, it, it does make sense in terms of consecutive numbers. But if they then build another one to the side of that, is that going to be platform minus one? You know, Network Rail makes some very interesting decisions regarding our railways. And everyone who, like all the people on Twitter who I see campaign for the railways to be re-nationalised re because of the uh, delays in uh, track maintenance and things like that, which mean that me means their trains get cancelled or delayed. Uh, Network Rail is a nationalised entity. It is owned entirely by the government. It's a not-for-profit organisation. Um, it's got nothing to do with the train operating companies and in fact as I saw from a documentary recently they get fined £200 for every minute a train is late and they have to pay that money directly to the train operating companies so that the train operating companies can pay that money directly to the passengers in the form of compensation and that is why renationalization is a bad idea welcome to King's Cross Platform minus one for the 1733. Yep, that's exactly it. I don't think there is actually room for another platform on that side, but that is what they're going to have to do. They should have just renumbered the platforms. Because you, if you actually go over to platform zero, this is not what it looks like in real life. These are actually walls, and there's like teeny tiny little door single door sized archways at the entrance there I've caught a train from platform zero and I didn't even know like I knew it existed but I didn't know I was there until I saw the train through the wall and then it was like oh that's where platform zero actually is obviously it's next to platform one but there's actually quite a gap between the two as well oh and something else Harry Potter fans you'll like this uh, so here's platform 8. Platform 9 is this way. Again, quite a long way apart. Platform 9 and 3 quarters, would you just like to step onto the track there, sir? Mr. Harry Potter, you can go through the wall there. Yeah, just in, in the track, that's it. Watch out for that train. Yeah, J.K. Rowling thought she was at Euston when she wrote about platform 9 and 3 quarters, because there is no wall between 9 and 10 at King's Cross. But there is at Euston, or at least there used to be. It was in 97 or 94, whenever the book was actually written. That's why it really winds me up when I see people. Because, you know, I'm a tourist when I go to London. I like to look around and see the sights. But it really winds me up when I'm trying to get my train home and I have to meander through those absolute morons trying to get their picture taken holding the trolley at platform 9 and 3 quarters, which is neither near platforms 9, 10 or even, you know, 7, 8. 
It's such a stupid place to put the shop. They built that whole new concourse so that passenger flow would be easier, and then they stuck a major tourist attraction in the middle of it so that crowds and crowds of tourists would get in everyone's way. It's a cash grab. I know that. It's a cash grab. They're not doing it for the business people. They're not doing it even for the British tourists. They're doing it for other tourists from all around the world who are Harry Potter fans. They couldn't give us stuff about us. That's me taking a drink, by the way. Apologies if you can hear that. Right. They actually have the same experience going from London to Cambridge. It's ridiculous, the lines going into that shop. It is! It's a shop, for crying out loud. People queue to go into a shop. I mean, they queue to get their picture taken in front of the trolley, and that's annoying enough. But there are is this, there's like a separate queue that goes into the shop. I really do just want to walk up to them and say, you do realise she meant to write about Euston. You know, it's like 500 metres down the road. Go and stand at platform nine and three quarters there. Leave me alone, I'm trying to get my train home. So dumb. This is a really long wait, by the way. I did arrive early, at least. 23 seconds early. Okay, I'm probably going to have to shift cabs. Again, I pressed Q. Okay, go via Potter's Bar. Uh, put the lights on. You're in forward. Here we go. It's not even to buy anything. They queue up to look around the shop, which has the same Harry Potter. Yep, yep, yep. I've done the Leavesden tour, um, and you know the shop there sells exactly the same stuff. It looks exactly the same. I'm not big on gift shops. I build them on Planet Coaster because it's realistic, but I've never really gone into one other than when I'm coming off a theme park ride or coming out the studio tour. Because you know, it's actually my hero that invented that phenomenon of exit through the gift shop. It's actually Walt Disney that invented that. The New York World's Fair in 1964, It's a Small World, you exited through the gift shop. And everything that's ever been built since then has employed the same tactic. It's dirty tactics, in my opinion. It's just making people buy things. It's making desperate people who want to go home buy things for their significant other or daughter or son or whoever it might be, just to get them out of the shop quicker. Anyway, I said I wouldn't rant tonight. Getting really good at ranting after I've said I wouldn't. 15 miles an hour. I'm doing 16. Of course I am. I thought, oh, I'll stop it on 15.9. So I've just got a little bit more of a contingency. And then it went over to 60. Not 60. 16. 1, 6. This must be so... Oh, I can do 45 now. This must be so boring in real life, x King's Cross. You just want to stick it in full whack, but you know you can't because your job's on the line. There's a networker. Look at that. Beautiful train. True. True. It's more of a grumble. Josh's web browser just closed for no reason. I'm guessing no one else has that problem. I mean, that is literally a problem I can't fix. <laughs> Come back, Josh. We miss you. Right, 65. My absolute favourite sensation on the railways is if you go on high speed one you go on a javelin from St Pancras International when it first enters the tunnel and you can feel when the line speed limit rise, rises because suddenly you get pushed back in your seat if you're facing forward that's such a I, I love the sensation of speed it's why I love roller coasters so much and that feeling of being pushed back in your seat by the g-forces 
It's a really awesome feeling. First time I felt that, I was like, oh boy, these trains are fast. And their maximum permitted speed is 140 miles per hour, but you just know that they've got more in the tank. You know the driver is desperately just wanting to push the accelerator just that little bit further. Here we go, rising to 80. I love the fact that, you know, if I was doing this in a, a 365 right now, I probably wouldn't have reached, whoops, 80 by the time I hit the 90. But in this, I reach it with room to spare. I've got to stop speeding. It's not good. I've got to remember to stop at Stevenage as well. I don't want to do a Nebworth. That's a train simulator in-joke, by the way. Alright, 90. There's no point in me accelerating. I might as well wait, wait for it to go up to 95 and then just do it as one big acceleration. I might have to start tooting through platforms soon. Although the platforms here, in fact a lot of them, on the southern end of the East Coast Main Line are actually fenced off to the uh, the fast platforms. So no one's technically in any danger. Alright, 90. It's also interesting to see what the line speeds are at these points. Oh, the FPS. It is a struggling. Well, I have to remember these speed limits when I'm redoing the uh, M4J network as it's now called. Make sure we're as realistic as possible. That HST shouldn't even be in that siding over there because that's a uh, Thameslink siding. Or a Great Northern. Actually, I think that's Great Northern. Thameslink's on the right hand side. Oh, the FPS. <laughs> now, now, Kurt, play nicely. an HST going the other way in the wrong bloody livery <clears throat> that there's no way that the 801s have that bell ringing sound for AWS clear no way is that the th case they've just reused the sound asset from something else Oh, the FPS. <laughs> it's a chugger lugging, all right. Hopefully, it thins out soon. There's Bounds Green on the right. That's where we came from. We are approaching some tunnels. Uh, Oakley Park South, I think this is. This is the uh, fump moment where you have a heart attack because a train passes it. Going in the other direction. Oops, wrong way. Anyone else have that or is it just me? Even though I know there's a train coming because I can see it in the reflected window, I still have the heart attack as it goes past. Josh is back. Welcome back, Josh. You missed so much while you were gone. Alright. It's starting to feel a little bit smoother. 100 miles an hour now. 115 shortly. Oh, I'm speeding. Guess who wasn't paying attention? There's another 25 points gone. We'll just cruise at 99 for now. I wish more modern trains had cruise control. I know that the 390s do, I'm not sure if these ones do in real life, and I don't think they've modelled it in the game even if they do. I'm speeding again, for Christ's sake. Let's see. Pan up, pan down, demister. Train door controls are on this side. 
That's the break. Going into the tunnels. Uh, CCTV. Emergency. More door controls. Yeah, I don't think we have cruise control. I, I don't think it's even called cruise control in trains. I think it's called speed management. Right, 115. We will be passing my hometown shortly. I will be sure to wave out on my window as the train goes by. Even though I don't actually live anywhere near the railway tracks. And my room's on the wrong side of the house even if I did. Speed set, yes. Is that you telling me what it's called or is that you telling me that I missed it? It wouldn't be over here. So it must be... I think if it were to be somewhere, it would be here along with the, uh, like the couplers and things. What's the, what's the DRA? Oh, it's overspeed, spad. Oh, they're lights by the looks of it. I'm not even looking where I'm going. <laughs> Fortunately, in these trains, you don't really have to, but... Train wash? Interesting. Yeah, normally it's in front of you if it's a thing. That doesn't get pushed up. Right. Yep, that's Josh telling me what it's called. I will learn these things. I will learn these things. Did he need driver reminding, reminder appliances? Surely, because these trains are fitted for future in-cab signalling, aren't they? Or that there's a space ready for them. I think it would be here uh, when they bring in the digital railway, as it's stupidly called. Um, just realised I'm going way below the speed limit. So I'm amazed that they actually need driver reminder appliances because the train knows what colour the signal is because it's displaying it in the cab. <laughs> sprinters, yes. There's pacers, there's sprinters, and because they realised that they'd overdone it with sprinters, they didn't have anything further for that, so they're just called express sprinters after that. They should have had, like, pacers, walkers, joggers, and then sprinters. That would have made much more sense. Right, Potter's Bar. This is normally the last stop before I have to get off. We're not stopping here now, obviously. Also, unfortunately, the site of the Potter's Bar rail crash, which I think was 2002 that happened. Which, again, not a very good moment. That was what killed rail track. Basically, the Hatfield crash and then the Potter's Bar crash shortly afterwards. That's what killed rail track and started Network Rail, which is a government-owned enterprise. Ah, the Super Sprinters, yes. And then it was the Express Sprinters. So they, they even then they overdid it. Can you imagine, like, b b uh, British Rail? They must have had a meeting where they thought, okay, we got a new type of train. It goes a little bit faster than the Sprinter. What do we call it? Ah, feck. We can't call it anything because we've just we've already used Sprinter. And Galloper, it'll just end up with a nickname like the Pacers, which is Nodding Donkey. Even then, they were very ambitious with the Pacers. Because their, their top speed is 75, which I suppose back then was very fast. But these days, that's a snail's pace. Right, this is Brookman's Park on the left. Next up is Wellham Green. And then it is Hatfield, which is my hometown. Which is also where I uh, went to uni. I've got to say that in the past tense now. I mean, I was there today, but I was there doing... Uh, other work, not uni work. Just using their facilities. Myself and Kurt. Working on an exciting project, which hopefully I can reveal to everyone soon. Here's Wellham Green. Oh, Josh, I warn you now, I'm going to break protocol, protocol significantly when we go through Hatfield. So 
there's a right hand turn and then a left hand turn. Here's the right. I'm also surprised. I know that the uh, the track here has been built for 140 mile an hour running, but I'm actually surprised that these new trains weren't built with tilting technology as well, so they can future-proof even higher speeds. Do you now, Josh? What's that then? Can you reveal it, or is it secretive still? All right. Here's the left-hander. There's the start of the platform. Here we go. Breaking protocol in three, two, one. Woohoo! Hatfield! Hometown! The horn's not working. Damn it. I was just going to hold the horn the whole way through. Alright, and then we've got Welling Garden City coming up next, which is the town where I was actually born. So, we won't be breaking protocol for that, because I've never lived in Welling Garden. For the aim of what I hope, it is secret between three people at the moment. Okay. Is it train-based by any chance? I should say now, I mean, my project isn't my project. It's myself, Kurt, Ben... And then a guy, Alex, and a guy, Sakeep, who are all working on something. I'm not the one who's actually working on the project. It's Kurt who's mostly doing that, which is why I'm not revealing too much at the moment. Because it's not really to do with... I'm not working on that side of things. I'm working on a different side of things. Still very important, though. I'd, I mean, I'd say our project is, is pretty spectacular. What we've got planned. Is it still 115 miles an hour through here? I could have sworn we'd have gone up to 125 by now. There's a uh, well in South Bridge. Trains that terminate from Moorgate go over that bridge when they uh, leave Welling Garden City. Here is Welling Garden City. Again, I won't be breaking protocol here. And coming up, we've got one of the nicest landmarks on the south side of the east coast main line Digswell Viaduct coming up, I think it's called Wellin Viaduct officially but um, Digswell Viaduct because it, it is in Digswell this is when you watch Top Gear they did the race to the north using Tornado and there was that shot of it going over the viaduct near the beginning of the, uh, the race, this is the bridge that that shot was taken from if I ride outside the train temporarily whilst we, uh... Won't let me zoom out for some reason. There we go. Here it is. Digswell Viaduct. It looks nicer in real life. I can assure you. Also, my pantograph's not up. Interesting. Well, in north... Uh, and then this is Nebworth South Tunnel. And this is Nebworth North Tunnel. Just as we hit 125, we are going to start slowing down. Is it at the rear? I thought it... Oh, crap. I thought it was at the front where the pantograph normally is. Or, in some cases, both. Got to stop speeding, Mark. Jesus Christ. Can you drop me a Steam message about what this secret project of yours is? Or is it that secretive that you can't tell me? Right, brakes are on. Tracks go from 2 to 4 again because Nebworth Station is coming up. What colour is my signal? Ye double yellow, I think that is. 
So I'll coast for a little bit. Here's the AWS again. I mean, we are stopping very soon at Stevenage, which is in three miles. Uh, did I miss Nebworth? I must have missed Nebworth then. Should have gone through Nebworth by now. Very shortly, the Hartford Loop Line will be joining up with us again. It diverged from us at Alexandra Palace, ran up, funnily enough, through uh, Hartford, and now it's going to rejoin us here. This is Nebworth. A word of advice then, Josh, if you're not allowed to talk about what your project is. I mean, I'm technically allowed to talk about my project, which is why I'm mentioning it on stream. I just don't want to reveal too much about it at this time, because it's not up to me as to when that happens. If you are working on a secret project, it's probably best if you just keep it to yourself until you can tell people. If it gets approved, then I will tell you, there is a crude clue. That's... is that a clue? Unless it's like you're applying for that job that you told me about. Alright, Stevenage coming up in 1.4 miles. And here I am doing 70 miles an hour because of the bloody signals. Actually, what colour was that signal? I didn't even check. I'm hoping it was double yellow. Otherwise, I'm probably not going to stop in time. Nope. Signal coming up is red. Okay, maybe I am going to stop in time. Yeah, I should stop in time. Uh, excuse me, why are you doing emergency brake? Excuse me, game. I was slowing down. <laughs> See, that still sounds like a diesel engine. Alright, single yellow. I know there's a thing where if you approach a, a red signal at over a certain speed, then the emergency brake will be triggered, but I was in the process of slowing down. Surely the, the game knows that, or the, the train knows that, and is able to react accordingly. Maybe it should matter. Because I was going to stop. I was going to stop in plenty of time. Alright, no point in me accelerating. Just going to coast into the station. Start slowing down now. Stevenage, where my f second favourite football team play. I need to say favourite, but that's not that's a lie. I'm a Newcastle fan through and through. I do like Stevenage, but, you know. Piss off, AWS. You've ruined this game for me. Uh, no, that wasn't an emergency. That wasn't an emergency. Screw it. <sighs> right. We are stopped. Doors are open. What's the passenger view in this like? Ooh, first class. We were upgraded. Very nice. Go to the back. Yep, we are in the platform. That's fine. I was a little bit worried that perhaps we weren't. Yeah, welcome to Stevenage, teenage pregnancy capital of the world.
And that is the end of the scenario, pretty much. Just got to wait for the uh, the time to tick down. And that's probably... Maybe I could squeeze in a quick 15-minute scenario. It might be Steam-based. If not, then this might be the end of the stream here. Is that train stopping here? It's not, is it? No. There's no way that train's going to stop in time. 665. I messed it up with the speeding. I know that. And it wasn't even like I wasn't familiar with the route. I am familiar with the route. I travel on it a lot. I actually know where most of the speedboards are as well for that reason. Um, that was just me not paying attention. What happened there? Alright. Drive. Let's see if I can do a quick 15 minute... There any 15... Oh, career. Any 15 minute ones here? There's a 25. There might be a 15 or oh, a 20 there. I want something that's not too labour intensive as well. And it's also a 25. I know the one I created is a 40. Isle of Wight? No. Mm, okay. What was it? Doncaster there, the 20 minute one. Yeah. It's not easy though. Hmm. This had. Maybe it didn't. It's got a 20 in a 9F. We'll do that. We'll see if we could do a nice 20 minute scenario in a 9F. The Probably the most powerful steam locomotive to be built in the UK in terms of tractive effort. This is a beast. It's got 10 driving wheels. Right, who have we still got in the chat? Commander Root, Josh, of course. Land Fusion, welcome to the stream. Uh, Golf is still here. And Kurt and Ben are both still here as well. So this will be the last scenario of the stream. We're going to go out in a explosion of smoke, steam, power. Lovely sound effects, hopefully. And uh, no speeding penalties, hopefully, as well. Because uh, 9Fs, they are powerful, but they ain't much fast. Come on, game. Just going to wait to hear that hiss of the steam engine. There will be 9Fs, or there will be a 9F, on the Somerset Hills Railway. Um, particularly to climb up the incline. I just stood on a plastic bottle on my floor. Uh, particularly to climb up the incline out of Lampton. There's the 9F. Right. This is Carlisle Kingmore MPD, Motive Power Depot, next to the West Coast Main Line. The shed staff have culled this 9F loco, but you must fill the tender. Oh, I've done this one before. I missed the uh, <laughs> I missed the water tower. Uh, you must fill the tender with water before starting your first duty of the day. Begin by reversing slowly until your tender is positioned below the water crane at the end of this siding. So, whacker. Oops. Whacker in reverse. Go shift two, so we're outside the cab. There's another chugger pulling away somewhere.
I'm gonna speed. No! Too much steam in the cylinders, Mark. Crying out loud. Right, where is this water tower? Well, I've not gone past it. Oh, I have gone past it. We'll try that again. Don't make me wait six hours for it to load. See? This isn't actually the one that I thought I'd done before. But the one I did do before started in Carlisle, required reversing through uh, a water tower or some sort. And I completely blew straight past it. Funnily enough, I've done that again. I was looking for like a big tank tower, whereas in fact I should have been looking for a standpipe. <sighs> Deary me. We'll, we'll put that down to uh, not paying attention again, shall we? It's the story of the stream. <laughs> dear, dear, dear. Come on, any second now. Any second now. Any second now. There we go. Right. Realistic driving mode selected. I didn't actually select that, but sure. So, that tower there is the one I need to be looking out for. That thing there. Release the brake. Gotta love the hiss of the brakes being released. Get a ready to start accelerating. I panicked. I was coming in far too fast. And now the safety valve's gone and I can't hear myself think. I've no idea if anyone can hear me right now. another 9F passing by in the background. Right, am I close enough? I don't think I am. Come on, brakes, release! There we go. Load up with some water. There goes another train. This is what I like. Scenarios with lots of trains, lots of movement, lots of action. One reason why I like certain preserved railways because they actually run trains more intensely than they would in real life, which is a lot more fun to watch. Oh, 
All right, still loading up with water. These tenders are big. The tanks are enormous. Oh, I think there's an express going by as well. Double header express. I may now proceed towards Carlisle. Check my route out of the shed and onto the goods lines via the turntable. As you approach the turntable, make sure the tracks are correctly lined up. Press Shift G to rotate the bridge. So I am reversing. Yes. So I've got to make sure I am going straight ahead here. And I actually have no way of telling. So where am I? I'm that one. I legitimately have no way of knowing if that is pointing the right way or not. We'll find out in a second. There's the speeding again. Oh. They are loud. Steam engines. They are loud. Particularly when the safety goes off. I'll give you that. But they are magnificent beasts when you get them going. Okay. Shift G. There you go. Turntable spun round. We can put a little bit more oomph in. So that train on the left there, this one, has been stopped to allow us out onto the line by the looks of things. Here comes another train. Not double header this time. That'll be us in a minute. Go. We are now out on the main line. Oh, that noise. See, so yeah, we are running a little bit late. And I think we will continue to run a little bit late. Because it took me forever to get lined up with the water tower. Oh. Alright, I'm not going to restart that scenario. That's me not watching signals properly. Entirely my fault, as per. God damn it. I'm going to kick myself so hard for that. Okay, guys. We're... we're actually pretty much bang on the two hour mark. Uh, it's been 1 hour 58 since I started. Which isn't bad. That's a good stream I feel. So, yep, we did two scenarios. Next week I will probably do some Somerset Hills Railway construction. Um, so we'll go in the build menu and we will do that. And then the week after that I will might do scenarios again. I might alternate between doing scenarios and doing building. 
really it depends on how creative I'm feeling on the week. Uh, so if you go on the Twitch page of the website, uh, previously it just said Somerset Hills Railway. Now it, it actually just says Train Simulator, and it 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 does specify there that it could be one or the other. Uh, the VOD for this stream will go up not next week but the week after, at I think it's 8 p.m. UK time. Um, so you get to watch it back if you do want to do so. Besides that, thank you very much everybody for watching. Thank you to everyone who's been uh, active in the chat as well. We didn't get any cheers this week, but that's fine. Um, I imagine it'll be a little while before cheers really start taking off, so my expectations are quite low, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, but yep, don't forget to go on the website, check all that stuff out. Don't forget to go on my YouTube channel and watch all the videos there as well. Thank you, Kurt, for the kind words. Once again, thank you everyone who's come in and watched. Thank you to everyone that's engaged in the chat. And yep, that's it for this week. So until next time, guys, I will see you soon.